Hello everyone. This week the Premier announced that we had finally reached our 70% double dose vaccination target, which is great news. It means that uh, many of the current COVID restrictions uh, can now start to be lifted and God willing, as we start to move towards December, we'll see more of those restrictions gradually being lifted. It's been difficult, hasn't it? Over the last four months, our government and the health department has done an amazing job of uh, working hard to keep us as safe as possible during uh, these uh, COVID times. I'm pretty sure none of us wants to contract that uh, deadly coronavirus. But it's been hard, hasn't it? Our safety has come at a cost. The lockdown has meant that uh, some of the things that we've been used to doing, many of the things like visiting family, hanging out with friends, playing sport, going on holidays, they've all had to stop. Even basic things like uh, school and shopping and exercising, uh, we've had to change how we do things during lockdown. Being safe is a wonderful thing. And our leaders and our healthcare workers have done an amazing job to try and keep us safe. But it's hard, isn't it? We want to be safe. But we don't want to be just safe, do we? We want to be safe. We need to be protected from COVID, uh, something that is capable of killing us. But we also want to be free. How nice would be to have some of those restrictions lifted over the next few weeks and to be free to move about the community once more. In the passage that we're looking at today, Jesus addresses both of these issues, so not the COVID issue of course, but the issues of safety and freedom. How can we be safe from death and also enjoy the freedom to live life to the full? Well, please join me in prayer as we dig into this section of God's Word together. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your Word. Please guide my words and all of our hearts and teach us so that we uh, may live in a way that pleases you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pick up uh, where we left off last week with Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. Remember from last week, we heard uh, about that amazing moment when Jesus healed a man who had been born, born blind from death. For the first time in his life, he was able to see. Remember what happened when the man told the Pharisees about Jesus. The Pharisees refused to believe him and threw him out of the temple. Chapter 9 finished with Jesus saying to the Pharisees that because they refuse to accept that Jesus is from God, they will face God's judgment. Unlike the blind man who had his eyes open to God uh, there and uh, put his trust in Jesus, the Pharisees had become blinded by their feelings of self-righteousness and refused to accept that Jesus was the Messiah that they had been waiting for. Chapter 10 opens with Jesus rebuking the Pharisees for the way in which they had been treating God's people. The Pharisees should have known better. They had been placed in a position of responsibility by God. They were supposed to take care of God's people Israel until God's saviour king arrived. But instead, these so-called shepherds of Israel had become blinded by their own uh, sense of self-importance. They hadn't taken care of the weak. They hadn't healed the sick. They hadn't bound up the injured. God's people had been scattered over the whole earth and no one had gone out to look for them. At the beginning of chapter 10, Jesus says to the Pharisees, I tell you the truth, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, leads them out. When he has brought them all out, 
all of his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. What Jesus is doing here in these opening verses of chapter 10 is explaining for the Pharisees, using figurative language, who he is and what he has come to do. The Pharisees would have been very familiar with the Old Testament imagery of God being portrayed as the shepherd and Israel being portrayed as the sheep and, uh, and the shepherd taking care of his sheep, God taking care of his people Israel. Now, those images would have been very familiar to the Pharisees. The blind man in chapter 9 is, is an example of one of those sheep that Jesus speaks of here at the beginning of chapter 10 who uh, this blind man who had been waiting in the sheep pen for the shepherd to come. When Jesus reaches out to the blind man in chapter 9 and heals him, he demonstrates to the Pharisees and to everyone who was there at that time that he was the one they had been waiting for. That Jesus was indeed that great shepherd talked about in the Old Testament. Jesus is God's promised Messiah. The one who comes with the full authority of his Father in heaven to heal the sick, to bind up the injured, and to usher in the kingdom of God. Just like sheep, when they hear the shepherd's voice, come to the shepherd and follow the shepherd, so the blind man, when Jesus heals him, responds in faith and worships Jesus. Jesus does what the Pharisees couldn't do. He heals the sick. He gives sight to the blind. He takes care of his sheep. And in a very polite way, Jesus is explaining in these first five verses of chapter 10 to the Pharisees that he is indeed the true shepherd of Israel. And at the same time, he is rebuking the Pharisees for the way in which they have been treating God's people. But as is it so often the case with the Pharisees, they don't understand what Jesus was telling them. And so Jesus speaks to them again. And this time he speaks much more directly. Verse 7. Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers. The sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Sheep pens are designed to keep sheep safe. Pretty obvious. The point of the sheep pen is to keep sheep in and keep everything else out. The gate is the only legitimate way for people to go in and out of the sheep pen. Anyone who goes in and out of the sheep pen must enter through the gate. Anyone who goes in or out by any other means has no authority to be there. When Jesus says in verse 7 that he is the gate, he is saying that he is the only person who has the authority of God to let people into God's kingdom. There is no other way. No one else has the authority. Jesus is the only way for people to be saved and to become part of God's family. Anyone else professing that there is another way to God is a thief and a robber and should not be listened to. For the Pharisees, these must have been very hard words to hear. The Pharisees were descendants of Abraham. They were children of Israel, God's chosen people, teachers of the law. As far as the Pharisees were concerned, they were already a part of God's family. Who is this Jesus that he would dare to claim to be the one uh, who has been sent by God to save the people? See, the problem for the Pharisees was that they were blinded by their own sinful hearts. Even though they worked hard to keep the law, their hearts were hard towards Jesus. They refused to listen to Jesus and to accept that he had been sent by his Father in heaven. Jesus says in no uncertain terms in verse 8 there, All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. But not only will you be saved, Jesus says, 
whoever enters through me, verse 9, will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. See, the thing about sheep is they can't stay in the sheep pen forever. They need food to eat. They need water to drink. They need to go out and find pasture where they can graze and streams where they can drink from. But they can't do that on their own. They need a shepherd to guide them. In New Testament times, if someone was able to go in and out of the city without fear, it meant that the city was at peace. Being in lockdown has been an important and necessary thing for us to keep us safe from the deadly coronavirus. Uh, it's been necessary to, to, to wait in, uh, in our houses, in our homes, for people to get vaccinated. And during this time, we, thankful to God and thankful to our government, uh, for the most part, everyone has been kept safe. But we want more than just to be safe, don't we? We want to be able to enjoy living out the joys that life has to offer. To visit our family and friends, to go away on holidays, to play sport, to go out for dinner, and so on and so on. We want to be able to live life. But that's just here on earth. What Jesus is talking about here in, in John chapter 10 is eternal life. Life that is a spiritual life, life with God forever. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John Piper, the great uh, American preacher, in uh, speaking about life to the full, puts it this way. None of us wants to be merely safe. We were not cre created merely to be safe. The human heart wants infinitely more than safety. Sure, safety is basic and necessary. We want to be protected from what can destroy us. We want life, but we want more than mere life. We want abundant life, overflowing life, deep life, joyful life. We don't just want to survive. We want to thrive at every level of our human being. Well, that was John Piper in uh, one of his uh, sermons uh, over in the US. What Jesus is promising to everyone who puts their trust in him is life in all its fullness. Life that is free of all the struggles and failings of this world. Life that is free from sin, free from death, free from suffering, free from pain. Life as it was meant to be in the presence of God forever. Now, how is that possible? Well, Jesus explains it in the remainder of this passage. Jesus says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. In Near Eastern countries, it's, it's common for the shepherd to lay down along the, the front of the, the entrance to the sheep pen. Uh, there weren't always gates, and uh, where there wasn't a gate, uh, the shepherd would simply lie down across the entrance so that no wolves or wild animals can get into the pen and harm the sheep, and the sheep can't get out and become harmed and unsafe. Sheep left to their own accord will wander off in all directions, and they'll get into all sorts of trouble. They're vulnerable creatures who need lots of protection. They're not strong enough to fight off the wolves or resist, resist the thief or the robber. They need someone to take care of them. Someone who will not abandon them when things get tough. And Jesus says, I am that person. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. On the cross, Jesus sacrificed his life so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But not only does Jesus lay down his life for his sheep, he has been given authority by his Father in heaven to take it back up again. The reason my Father loves me, says Jesus in verse 17, is that I lay down my life 
only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up. This command I received from my Father. Amidst the uh, failings of the Old Testament shepherds of Israel and the neglect of their responsibilities of shepherds of God's people, there is a beautiful picture recorded for us by the prophet Ezekiel of God himself promising to take care of uh, his sheep and uh, to come and look after them. Promising to rescue them from all the places where they've been scattered. Promising to, to come and, uh, and seek them out, find the lost. The Lord says uh, in Ezekiel 34, I will search for the lost. I will bring back the strays and I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Jesus is the good shepherd who with the full authority of his Father in heaven gave up his life in order to save his people. And he was raised back to life so that whoever believes in him will not perish but be saved and have life to the full. Well, having heard uh, Jesus' words, the Jews are again divided in how they respond. Many of them, we're told there, uh, verse 19, uh, claim that he is demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of a man who is possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? I guess the question for us is, how will we respond? What voice or voices will we listen to? Or are we listening to? Are we listening to Jesus? Or are we listening to some other voice, to the thieves and the robbers of this world who, who try to speak to us and steer us away from Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus truly is the good shepherd who gave up his life so that you would not perish, so that I would not perish? So that everyone who believes in Jesus would not perish, but have eternal life. Are there areas of your life where you know you are straying from Jesus? We all stray. The Bible tells us that we all, like sheep, have gone our own way. Now, we all have things in our life that we need forgiveness for. Turn to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. You know, what's the sheep's biggest source of security? The shepherd. And how does the sheep get the shepherd's attention? They cry out. Turn to Jesus. Cry out to him. Ask Jesus to help you. He will hear you. He knows all of us by name. To everyone who turns to him in faith, he promises that they will be saved. And they will not just have a safe life, but they will have life to the full. They will come in and go out and find pasture and have life to the full. Life with God forever. You know, a sheep left on its own without the protection of the shepherd faces certain death. It's vulnerable to be killed and destroyed by the thief or the wolf. If we choose not to follow Jesus... We are left to face death alone without the certainty of life that Jesus gives. But if we follow Jesus, then we can be assured that our good shepherd who has laid down his life for us only to take it up again will never abandon us. That is indeed wonderful news. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending him into the world to save us. Thank you that he is the good shepherd who laid down his life for us. Please forgive us for the times when we have strayed away like lost sheep. Please guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.